Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome our next guest. As you'll probably be aware that Hungary will have the presidency of the Council of the EU from July. Um, so we have asked today the State Secretary for Energy and Climate Policy, the, Minister, uh, the Ministry of Energy at Hungary, to come and join us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Attila Schneider. Thank you. Thank you, Attila. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for, for the opportunity that I can be here. And uh, as uh, it was in the introductory remarks, we will take over the rotating presidency for the second time uh, in the Council of the European Union. And I think it's, uh, it's a very important time when Hungary will take over this, very, with this uh, task, since that will be the last institutional cycle before 2030. And uh, I think we will have the privilege to set the tone for the next institutional cycle. And that's why I would like to share with you some thoughts and some priorities which we would like to put on the agenda during the presidency semester. Actually, back in 2011, when we hold the first uh, presidency, the motto of the presi presidency was Stronger Europe. And yes, since then, several things happened financial crisis, migration crisis, uh, energy crisis, a war next to our borders. So I think now we will have a much more challenging task to have a stronger Europe after, after the presidency. And I firmly believe that alone policymakers cannot do that. So we need a much deeper collaboration with all of the stakeholders, including businesses, including regions, including member states, and including citizens. Otherwise, we will not succeed. And actually, uh, the Hungarian presidency would like to provide a platform to bring closer to those stakeholders and um, also to reduce the gap between policymaking and implementation. Because I think what is the key challenge now, we have many, many ambitious goals, we have good strategies, but we are lagging behind with the implementation. And I think this is the key, how we can move everybody to implement our, our strategic directions. And um, of course, that's why one of the key priorities of the Hungarian presidency will be the competitiveness of Europe. Because during, before the energy crisis, before the war, I think that, that this aspect was a little bit forgotten. We talked a, lo a lot about sustainability, we talked a lot about 2040, 50 targets, but, but the competitiveness now in Europe and in the coming years, I think it's a little bit forgotten. Now it's more and more in the, in the debate, also on the strategic debate of, of leaders, but, uh, but I still see quite a big gap and discrepancy between sectoral rules and, and, and the strategic objective to be more competitive. And I think that, that aspect what we will bring uh, to, to the leaders' attention. And of course, energy is one of the key pillars of, of competitiveness. Uh, Europe is a resource-poor uh, um, continent. We do not have fossil energy so much, so we are very much import-dependent. But still, we have renewables, which is still there is a large potential to, to use it more, but how we master it, I think this is not, not, not obvious and we need uh, more, more debate on that. And um, that's why I think the Energy Council sessions will play a crucial role during the next semester when we talk about uh, competitiveness. Actually, uh, we plan to organize an informal Energy Council session in, in July and also a formal session in, in December and in between several conferences on, on some uh, topics. And what are those topics? Uh, we uh, defined three key priorities in terms of uh, energy. First is um, more, much more focus on implementation and how we can translate it into EU language. Actually, this is uh, the national energy and climate plans. Because by the start of the Hungarian presidency, theoretically all of the member states will finalize their national energy and climate plans and will submit to the European Commission. 
and we will have an overview of where we are standing at. Is, 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 is still a significant gap to reach 2030? What kind of actions do we need to be able to, to meet our goals? Is it feasible to meet our goals? So I think that that uh, debate is still missing, and that's what we would like to focus on during our Energy uh, Council sessions. And um, as it was very obvious from the EU electric study, we have to accelerate the pace of the transition very significantly. And I think uh, Hungary could be a very honest broker for that, uh, that uh, topic, since um, you indicated a double pace uh, in your study. I think in Hungary we need, we need a higher uh, pace even. And, um, and that's why I think the NECPs, the National Energy and Climate Plans, will play a crucial role in terms of um, implementation. Actually, in Hungary, we are a small landlocked country, and we have also particular uh, challenges. And the green transition, it's uh, not only fulfilling our legal objectives and to be more sustainable, but if we uh, implement that plan, then we can also reduce our import dependency on fossil fuels and reduce our exposure to Russian uh, fossils. I think uh, this, is, uh, this is such a value added uh, in case of Hungary, which we have to capitalize on. And I think we are quite on a, a good track. Uh, we already managed to reduce emissions by 37% compared to 1990. And we managed to decouple economic growth and emissions. And I think this is the key task for the long term, how we can do that, because we need economic prosperity, but in the meantime, we need lower emissions. And um, here uh, we have a three pillar strategy uh, in, in our national energy and climate plan, how we reduce our dependency. Firstly, of course, we have to reduce uh, natural gas demand. And energy efficiency uh, projects will be very crucial for the next couple of years. We managed already to reduce uh, our consumption by 21%. So I think this is a very remarkable um, achievement. However, we have to continue on, on that path. Secondly, how we can substitute natural gas with other energy carriers like geothermal energy, biogas, biomethane, uh, or potentially hydrogen in mid, mid and long term. So I think this is the second key pillar uh, where we have to uh, move uh, forward. And where I see the largest potential, this is electrification. This is the third uh, priority, to switch gas consumption to electricity consumption. And here we have a huge, huge potential. And, but we need an electricity infrastructure which is capable to deliver a higher quantity and the very different characteristics of, of, um, of electricity, what we are used to uh, during the last uh, decades. And that means many, many investments parallelly in power generation, in grid, in storage, in smart solutions. So that's why actually our prime minister has decided uh, by the end of 2022 to create a dedicated energy ministry in Hungary, first ever in, 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 in the Hungarian government, to execute uh, that national energy and, and, and climate plan. In case of um, electricity, um, we are progressing quite well. Uh, we have one nuclear power plant uh, two gig with two gigawatt uh, capacity, and we would like to extend its lifetime because we think there is still additional 10, 20 years in this nuclear power plant. So that project has been, has been launched recently. And additionally, we would like to continue by uh, building two additional nuclear blocks, because what we expect, it's a 40, 50% electricity demand growth in Hungary by 2030. So in six years, basically. So that means we need much more, much more power generation assets. We are progressing well with the PVs. Actually, after Greece, we have the second highest share of, uh, of PV electricity generation. Uh, it's more than 18%. Uh, percent. And, um, but um, the key challenge is that we have less 
sunny hours than in Greece. So actually, it's only 16% of the time when we can utilize uh, the PVs. We have six gigawatt PVs already connected to the grid. And together with the nuclear power plants, we can 100% cover uh, the domestic uh, demand with carbon neutral sources. But of course, the key challenge is the rest, the 84% of the time, what, what we can do. And that's why we need uh, flexibility and we need more, more assets which, uh, which, which can provide uh, balancing energy. So that's why we would like to invest in additional CCGT units, but we would like to heavily invest into storage. Uh, we unfortunately do not have any hydro pump and storage uh, facility, and now MVM is uh, instructed to, to uh, start the preparation of, of such project. And uh, we also launched a battery um, support scheme, a contract for difference scheme for batteries, of which will increase our battery capacity from 25 megawatt to 450 megawatt by 2026. But of course, this is, uh, uh, this is a good direction, but without grids, uh, it's, it, will, it will be not uh, sufficient. So we very heavily have to invest into grids, and that's why we already launched the 500 million euro uh, grid development project, uh, including TSO and all of the DSOs. But I think we have to keep that uh, pace for, for longer run in order to be able to, to tackle the challenges. And not to mention that we are also an immediate neighbor of Ukraine, and we have the strongest link uh, to Ukraine among all of the um, uh, European countries. We have four interconnectors towards Ukraine, and um, it was also a very challenging task to synchronize uh, the Ukrainian market to, 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 to the uh, European system, but we managed it during a record time, during two weeks. And now also the commercial flows are increasing. So I think it's really, it's really important to, to, to have a very strong uh, grid uh, in, the, in the future. And that's why our second priority during the Hungarian presidency will be the electricity grid. And um, I already uh, invited uh, Mr. Binbaum to, to one of the sessions to present our electrics uh, view on, on the grid, because what I think uh, in, in, in that circle, in, in energy community and, uh, and that community, the challenges and problems and potential avenues are quite well known. But this is not too true for policymakers and politicians. And somehow we have to find the right platform to articulate those challenges also for politicians, because finally it will impact supply security, and it will impact tariffs and, and fees and citizens at the end, voters. So that's why I think in, in the future uh, it will be one of the key challenges how to uh, educate basically the, the, the politics on, on that very technical and, and, uh, and uh, uh, hard, hard to and uh, understand for the politicians such details, but somehow we have to do that, that job. And I, I think that will be one of our key uh, tasks for, for the presidency. Thirdly, as a third priority, we would like to uh, uh, focus more on also other renewable sources, not only uh, solar and wind, but geothermal, because this is still an untapped uh, potential in several uh, member states. And uh, with the uh, deployment of uh, geothermal, we can substitute a lot, lot of natural gas consumption. And it's local, it's base load, so I think it has many, many benefits, but of course many challenges, because it's a very expensive and very risky uh, business. So how we can de-risk the business, how we can uh, uh, streamline permitting, which is very complex in, in several countries. That will be also a very important topic, and we would like to call on the Commission to think about some, some um, recommendations and potentially also to set up a fund which can, which can uh, de-risk uh, those projects. And of course, uh, 
uh, nobody knows what will happen on the gas markets. It's not planned that we will talk about any gas market intervention, but if the situation will evolve in such a direction, then we have to convene maybe some extraordinary council sessions, but hopefully this will be not uh, the case. So these will be the key priorities during um, uh, the um, uh, Hungarian presidency on, on ele ele energy. And I truly believe that um, we can contribute, that Europe can be stronger, more resilient, because I think the basics are quite good. So we have very robust structures. We have a robust single market. We have a synchronized European grid, which is crisis resistant. We, we, we could, we could uh, see it uh, one, uh, one, two years ago. But in the meantime, we have also the uh, regions, we have the member states, and we have also the local solutions, which can adopt much quicker than a big, robust structure. And if we master this well, this, this interaction between the adaptivity and, and the strong robustness, I think then, then, then we can be much stronger at, at the end than, than currently. And for that, of course, we need a very strong cooperation between all of the stakeholders, policymakers, businesses, citizens. And then I think Europe can regain its strength and we will be much faster and, and quicker and more EU uh, solutions. So the Hungarian presidency will do its utmost to, to contribute to that goal. And I would like to also invite uh, the industry to, to contribute uh, to, to that effort. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>